Eight years ago, we started a conversation with Mr. Agbara Michael Ojobo, who is the controller of customs in Ogun State here. We went all the length of looking at the role of populations in, in customs, the shortcomings of customs itself in, in some areas, and then we concluded on the note of uh, the, the challenges which customs have been battling to overcome. This week, we'll continue the conversation from where we stopped. And again with me in the studio is Mr. Agbara Ojobo Michael. It's my pleasure to welcome you for the second week run, Mr. Agbara. Thank, Thank you for having me. We, we, if you remember, we, we stopped at the point in which you are trying to look at the leaps that have been achieved by customs since 1996, uh, when from the long groom, there have been also movement to other processes in enhancing the clearing of goods. Can we take it from, from, from there? Yes, uh, like I was saying that uh, last week, the platform we have now, the single window platform, which has been upgraded to NICES 2, now accommodates other government departments, like NAPDAC, like SON, who are regulatory authorities. From the comfort, even NDL, NDLA, from the comfort of their office, they can intervene in the procedure for release clearance of goods. Where they have objection to any goods, they can send an alert. They don't need to be physically there. So those are the improvements that have come. And on the part of traders, there's the trader zone, what they call trader's input, can be made from their office. You don't need to come to custom office to make your declaration. So you declare, this is what I have, this is the cost, and this is the duty I'm supposed to pay. If you declare correctly, and custom view it and know that it's correct. The process is, is passed on. Where there is need for scanning, it will go for scanning. Where there is need for physical examination, it will be done. Mm. Then it proceeds to release at the terminal. But the, the snag we always have is, Nigeria is the only country that most of the containers, they don't carry homogeneous items. A container will carry like 10 different items. Then what mostly they do, fraudulently, some of them will declare the item with the, higher, with the lowest value for duty purposes. And because customers has a lot of intelligence available to them, yeah. once such is suspected, they go for 100% examination. Do they have to go for physical exam in this age of technology where if you deploy the right technology, it can even scan and tell you exactly every item that is contained in the container? Okay, thank you. Even with the best of technology, if you import spare parts, yeah. which are all metal, okay. and you put pieces of arms in the, in in the, the same container, container, how do that technology resolve it? So even with the best of technology, when it is absolutely necessary, 100% examination is done for the health of the country, most especially security. So that is the trend. That is why I'm telling you, in other climes, containers carry homogeneous goods. So you don't even need to intrude. What you can do is a non-intrusive examination, which is scanner, and all you know, even by volume, Looking at the volume and the weight, you can know that this thing is correct. But if you know the weight of one, you can easily multiply it to know that this is the total tonnage. It makes the job easy. But in our own, uh, is the, what they call groupage, mm. the goods may not even belong to one person. This one will tell you, this is what I have there. Maybe the opposite is what is happening. So it makes it cumbersome. If we help ourselves, we will go. But that is why custom have what is called fast track, okay. as an incentive yeah. to honest traders. If you are honest in your declaration over the years and you import up to a level, they'll give you that facility. Your goods, the container you import, will not even be looked at in the, in the port. It will be taken to your premises. Mm. So it will be checked there. There is nothing like delay. Okay. So those are the innovations the service is trying to do. That is for port, for border areas. Yes. Like where I pretend, we don't have problem of delay. If you come today, make your declaration, make your payment, you still go today, today. That is what we know. But there was a snag 
the snag is that in February this year, the Benin Republic yeah. made a secular to their custom at Igolo mm -hmm. and other places that all transit goods that come through Benin port should be directed to Seme and not to Idiroko, mm -hmm. which means if you are an importer in Ogu and your goods come to Kotonu, you must go through Seme, which is added cost. Mm -hmm. So we protested. I wrote to my headquarters. My headquarters took it up. They got back to them. Up to the time we are speaking, they have not resolved the matter. And those are part of the reason for the temporary closure. Oh, okay. Because you cannot detect to another country. The Convention of World Custom Organization, which we all belong, there is a convention yeah, on transit. Decision. The choice of destination is for that of for the importer, not for the transit or the country of transit. transit. Can I bring you back? Why would a Nigeria importer prefer to use the Benin was uh, the port instead of the Nigerian port? Yeah, I think that question should go to those in that practice. But me, I have my suspicion. Okay. A lot of them want to cut corner. Because when they get to Benin, the container that lands in Benin is unstuffed and put in various vehicles. What is the meaning of unstuffed? That is, they offload it from the container. Okay. The container doesn't come to Nigeria. Yes. When you unstuff yeah. and you put, if there are some security items there, they can remove it. No, Even, but it will still pass through land borders. No, it mo it's not always the case. We have many unapproved rules. We have creeks. And that brings us back to one of the areas that you have received training on, which is uh, border management. Yeah. Uh, which is, uh, you, you look at the options that we have. We've always been crying for a long time that uh, we have porous borders in Nigeria, over a thousand illegal routes here and there. But look at other countries. They have looked at other possibilities. For instance, there are countries that have erected walls in, in their borders. You look at Nigerian Benin Republic. What is the option of erecting a wall in okay. such a manner that will make policing of the Nigerian end effective? Thank you. That's a good question. The issue, even United States of America, with the best of technology, yeah. in desperation, went for wall. But you and me, you watch news. People still climb the wall. Is it not true? Yes. What to me is not a solution. So what will be? The solution, before I say that, Nigeria has a border coastline of over 4,000 kilometers. Yes. To erect a wall, you know, it's a massive cost. The solution is technology. We should go from the analog way of doing our work to digital. We should get the appropriate technology. And that is what my controller general has been fighting for. And I think, God willing, the government is listening to him. Some approvals have been made. Because, you see, in this modern time, I can sit in the comfort of my office and say, okay, something is coming on this road. So, so patrol, move to that road immediately. Precision. Yes. There's no question of guesswork mm -hmm. or try and error. No. With technology, Absolutely. if we have that, we can do it. That is the way to go. Let's now look at one of the frequent areas of disagreement between customs and then especially the Nigerian problem. It's this idea of going to markets or stopping cars on the road uh, and then asking for clearance papers and all what have you. Uh, again, you're talking about improvements. <laughs> well, is, would you still say this is um, desirable in 21st century? that customs will go to markets and then stop cars on the road and say, where are your papers? Yeah. Good. Uh, what you should note is we are operating a very uncompliant climate or environment. Nigerians were not compliant. Let me give you an example. How many of us are in this studio? If you pay us our salary and say, go and pay our tax, how many do you think will go and pay? Oh, government will have taken the tax before paying. No, no, I zoom in. I'm telling you, I zoom yes. in. Mm -hmm. They give us the money. Yes, go I had and say go out, thanks. 
How many do you think will go and pay? Why should people pay tax when they don't see the value of the tax? Well, if you say you're not seeing it, then I'm surprised. <laughs> no, you should be surprised. I'm surprised. But coming to your question. Yes, please do. Uh, you know, we operate under the law. Yes. Custom is guided by SEMA. Mm. Or what you call CAP, C for, CAP 45, Law of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004 as amended. Yeah. That is our guiding law. Okay. We follow it. The law under Section 147 allows custom to patrol anywhere. Market is not excluded. But under my watch in Ogun, I've re resisted going to the market because I don't want collateral damage. It's a crowded area. But I go to warehouses. I go to even people's houses. The law allow me without warrant to do it, but under caution. But we always avoid collateral damage. Of recent, with the national dream, the federal government gave marching orders to the components, which include the military, the police, custom immigration, DSS, and other security agencies that are participating to even go to market and retrieve any prohibited item. So it's not my law. I'm only an implementer. Yes. So why it is done like that? You know, custom has to do with revenue. Yeah. If there is no revenue, there is no government. Yeah. Just like what blood do to us in the body. body. So those provisions are made so that custom matters are things that are given priority. Even the federal high court, once custom case come, the judges will give you priority. So I get it done and go back to your work. So you see, when you ask that, with all this, why do they come to check papers? If we are honest, nobody will check any paper. But if you look at where I'm operating now, I don't want to mention other places, but what is happening here happens all over Nigeria. It's not typical of any state. Nigerians cut corners. The porous borders, like you have said yourself, we have seven approved borders in Ogun. Yeah. But we have over 300 that are unapproved. There is no how, with no technology at all, that I can block all those unapproved. First, we are now operating at the same level with smugglers. They use mobile phone. We use mobile phone. Once they see any pickup, they will call those people. Pickup has entered this road. So with the other roads created, just like the rat hole, they will divert from where you are going. So a lot of them will still enter. And in the process of even entering, a lot of our officers have made supreme sacrifice through those who are doing uh, such criminal activity. It's not that it's the whole community that is doing it, mm -hmm. but the few people doing it, they are, they, are, they are terrible people, dangerous people. So once in a while, some enter. If you come to my premises, you see motor as if I'm selling vehicles. Those are vehicles arrested by custom, but they will not stop. That is why we still check people on the roads. And even what they are doing now, some of them go to the estate of changing the number of vehicles. So that if you are not careful, you buy it, you see that they have just collected, they have duped you. And by that time, you don't know their shop. So I will advise people, you want to buy a vehicle, make sure you send the particular, the C number to custom to confirm for you so before you, you buy, buy, to avoid all those things. And I want to inform the public too, especially in Ogun. The controller general has magnanimously granted a waiver that those who have vehicles in their house and the duty are yet to be paid, they can avail themselves the opportunity of paying duty. It's ongoing. So I want them to take note, the general public, those who have that category of vehicle, please bring application and the picture of the vehicle, both front and back. 
I will send I will send the bill to you to pay for this advertisement. Okay, I'm helping the public. <laughs> it's public interest. Well, it's in public interest <laughs> and as well as so, but somebody has to pay for that public interest. Oh, well, okay. But okay, go on. I'm just So I think it's good for us so that people avail themselves and save themselves an embarrassment. The embarrassment. I, I think thank you, Mr. Agbara. You mentioned two things. Uh, first, which is that most of these illegal routes they pass through communities yeah. uh, and they are not in nice, they are not on the sky they are not on the air uh, and you also have gone through a process of uh, training on coordinated border management and in relation to that is what i'm asking that in 2015 the the international customs day uh, addressed the issue of uh, coordinated border, border management yeah. and inclusive approach in involving stakeholders. People in these routes, they are members of community. How much of engagement, how much of involvement do you have with where these routes are located? And how, how did you improve in, in, in sensitize or bringing them to understand that they can also partner with customs in minimizing uh, the, the smuggling that is going on through their areas? Thank you so much. Um, custom or the command, Ogun command, we have a robust relationship with the stakeholders. There are forums where we meet. They are equally at the, at the command level. We do meet, we sensitize, we engage, we hear their complaints, and we try to bring them to our side. Because right now, or before now, the, the communities were working for smugglers. You see, if you look at the level of development of border communities, yes. even if you are there too, you may not be patriotic mm -hmm. because of point. lack of presence of government yes. at all levels. Not only federal, we have local government, we have state government, and we have federal. If you go to some of the communities, there is hardly any government presence in of schools, hospitals, uh, water, clean water. So if you are not doing anything for somebody, how will it be patriotic? You don't build patriotic, patriotism on nothing. No, no, empty rhetoric. So we try to talk to them and we try to carry their, their views, their yeah. views okay. to the government. You, are, you agree with me that right now the government has what is called Border Co Community Development Commission which is to address some of these things that we have been raising. So we try to engage them and dissuade them. The only problem we have is due to the level of unemployment and poverty, some of them become pounds in the hands of smugglers. You know the smuggler makes easy money, doesn't pay any tax, doesn't obey restriction or prohibition. So he makes money. It is only money that is his problem. And he uses the money to compromise people. I, uh, generally, we don't have problem with border communities. Because if you are at the border station like in Mecca, yeah. you must relate with the community. You eat with them, you share with them, and they interact with the opinion leaders, the traditional they use. We do that. Even that is what we do at command. It's escalated down, downwards. But the problem is, when somebody is poor, in terms of desperation, yeah. you can easily be lured into what you don't even want to do. So when we meet with them, like two days ago, we had a session with the Pokia okay. youth. And we told them, the smugglers you people fight for, how many of their children follow you to fight? They are in the comfort of their homes either in uh, Kotonu or somewhere. The, 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 the people here have not seen any of them as a serious-minded smuggler. Yeah. What we see here is they use them as carriers. They will give you motor or give you rice, cross the border, take your money. I told them, don't worry. If, if you collect their money, when you see custom, drop it for custom. Go. Don't fight custom. Then some of them too, when custom makes seizure, you know you have to 
take time to organize vehicles, to carry them and all this, they mobilize people to come and attack you. If not for that, we have no problem with border communities. We know they are our hosts, and they don't quarrel with their hosts. So if you ask questions, anytime you see a clash, it's people who recruit them. Thank you, Mr. Aguara. Uh, part of your career uh, is working in, uh, at the airport. Um, I think you are OC legal or something. Yeah, I was equally uh, OC hall. OC hall and so. And the custom is a very visible face at the airport. And unfortunately, it's also one of the agencies there that is always at the wrong side of public criticism. Uh, that unnecessary checking of rules and asking for necessary trips and so. Let's look back. Um, when you tend to look at what has happened in your time and now, do you have any sense that um, the ethics are not there for customs or port at the, at the airports? Uh, well, I think that might not be correct. The Nigerian Customs Service has ethics, has procedures for every port. Mm. If it is airport, there is procedure for doing everything. You see, where you see problem at the airport, there used to be two areas of conflict. Okay. At international wing, you know the people have traveled long hours. Yeah. Most of them are agitated already. So even come and say, please, what do you have in your bag? What do you put in my bag? <laughs> that you're asking me, it's already flaring up. Ah, well, as a trained officer, you're not supposed no, to. No, you, you <laughs> calm down. Course, yeah. I'm very sorry, <laughs> but please, what is the content? You still have to stand firm, but you have to be diplomatic. That is what we call in custom, costly without loss of dignity. <laughs> okay. Yes. yes. So we have to do that. But then, a lot of us, we don't want to pay what is. If you can buy a shoe, of $2,000, what stops you from paying the duty? It's a luxury item. So that the... I hope you are not referring to one case that is just a good... No, no, I'm just... Okay. I'm not supposed to speak for airports. <laughs> but I'm giving you an okay, example. Okay. Then in the cargo, okay. there used to be hoodlums yeah. at that place. Their specialization is to steal goods from the shed. If you stop them, they'll fight you. But we thank God. The place is now cleaned up. Both the airport uh, security and other security agencies, if you have no business, you cannot enter. Mm. In those days, it was free for all. Okay. Anybody can enter and carry goods, as if he's the owner. Our experience one life. Somebody sent a consignment through me. They gave me the airway bill. I was with the airway bill waiting to get an agent to go and clear it for me. The airway bill was still with me. Somebody called me. Say, are you so, so, so? I say, yes. He said, you have consignment sent to you from somewhere. I say, what is the item? He called the name of the item. I said, ah. but the bill of lading is with me. <laughs> he said, oh, God, don't worry. Come and meet me in so, so place. I'll give you. So as an officer, what I did is I went with enforcement officers. We apprehended him, but true, true, the goods were with him. How did he manage to get the goods? They fight and steal it. But today, we thank God, it's all over. So there is massive improvement in the service. Some of these things are just things that computerization has helped us. Now, tallying of goods has been, uh, is now in digital form. Every goods is accounted for. So if you steal, somebody will answer for it. You know what happens? When goods arrive, yeah. they are not in our custody. Yeah. They are in custody of the service provider, the handlers. It is from handlers they used to steal them. If nobody sees them, they are gone. The owner can claim the handlers. But that era has gone for good. I thank you that that era has gone for good. But short one, very short one, because time is running out. When you look back in 2018, uh, from January to August, you did declare that you succeeded in making about 799 million naira outside uh, the revenue from the report. You, I mean, from the report, when you, 
that you are giving to, to the members of uh, the press. Now, you look at it now, um, that the borders have closed. Are we losing any money? Well, uh, though that figure you quoted is not totally correct, as of January to August. 2018, that's what I'm saying. Oh, 2018. 2018, not now. We generated more than that. It's right, billion. Well, that's what you said. We're talking of, I think we had um, this five or six billion. Yeah, you said 799 million naira. That's for January to August. Very short. Yeah, not for the entire year. So as at that not for the entire year. For that 2018. For I that was six in, months. Ago. I was in charge of the entire August state, which includes excise factories. Yes. So the figure couldn't from the Diroko that. end. That's what okay, I'm saying. Okay, from the Diroko end. That duty good. paid value. Okay, duty good. paid value. The component that we should have counted as a loss has been stopped since February this year. Okay. By the non-admittance of uh, transit goods to Diroko. Most of our revenue is from imports. Mm. So since February, there has been no import through Diroko. You notice you observe it. So for us, there is no question of a loss. But what you call, may call a loss at the border mm. is being harvested at the post. That is why my controller general came out and said, since the closure, the revenue has gone higher. Okay. So well, there is no revenue loss. Well, um, I really want to thank Mr. Agbara for really coming uh, to this program uh, to provide much more uh, enlightenment on the community relations, the public relations, uh, and the entire way customs is discharging its responsibilities uh, to the Nigerian public. Uh, uh, on the point of departure, I think people like you should put your experience into book form uh, for the younger generation in customs and the wider public to lead. Uh, you can keep that in mind. Um, not many Nigerians are putting their memoirs, but I know in the next two or three years you'll be taking your exit from customs. Uh, but consider writing your memoirs. You have a lot uh, that you can share with them. That is the way it's going to be, uh, and until we have another distinguished personality, see, uh, thank you for watching, and goodbye.